All right, episode... 52, episode 52, mm -hmm. the problems that all business owners face and what I learned from Wayne Salomon's Titan's Table Mastermind. We're gonna get started right now. It's been a year. Welcome to the only real estate podcast worth listening to with your hosts, Nick Good, Matt Kelderman, and Brian Force. Combined, they have 26 years of experience and have sold over 1,500 homes. Join them each week as they bring you everything you need to know about real estate. And now, here are your hosts, Nick, Matt, and Brian. You want me to bring it in now? I feel like we were all talking to each other during the intro and nobody could hear, so I don't know. We just we, Everything just got lost in translation. Hope it wasn't important. Episode 52. Jeez. A full year of <clears throat> shows. It's weird the other day, I was thinking when we did episode 50 that it's been a year, and I'm kind of just realizing now there's 52 weeks in a year. Happy anniversary, guys. <laughs> it's unfortunate, because I feel like you're the smartest dude here. <laughs> I <laughs> actually didn't know that. It's kind of At least when it comes to that, right? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> so if, if, if you haven't done so already... Go over to our real estate Facebook group, the only real estate group worth being a part of. Go ahead, request access in there, and go and just have fun. Go ask questions. We're posting a lot of crap in there, um, but it's good crap. We're not sharing open houses. We're not asking CRM talk. Yeah, and if um, you're sharing open houses in our group, why don't you just stop that? Yeah, yeah, we've had a few violators in there. Matt uh, and I did a two-and-a-half-hour training class the other day. That was crap. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> we almost had to delete and block. As, as much as we spend time on camera, I went back and watched that, and I was like, yeah, we don't need to put that in there anymore. I was, so Aaron we did were, a great job of making sure that to call you out, Matt, for holding that whiteboard up. Foster's yeah, always busting hilarious. balls on every we were, we were in the middle of doing the class, and like, so we had a bunch of people there in person, and then we did the live stream. And so on the live stream, I had my computer running, so I had the slideshow for the class and the live stream up on the same computer. And if I didn't switch the windows properly, every time I tried to hit the button to go to the next slide, it would end the live stream on Facebook. <laughs> There's one distinct time. This is not on the live stream because I ended the live stream when I hit the button. I meant to switch the slide, and I hit the thing in the end of the live stream and out loud for no reason in the middle of Matt talking. I was like, motherfucker, <laughs> in the middle of the class. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> like, just got all schizophrenic there for a second. Anyway. So if you're wanting to take more listings, let's go ahead and get this knocked out of the way. If you want to take 10 plus listings every single month like we do, uh, go ahead over to touracademy.com backslash take 10, T-E-N, sign up for the free webinar where you're going to learn all the lead generation strategies, the techniques, the tactics, the qualification plans that we have in there that helps us take 10 plus listings every single month. Um, we are so close to breaking 20 this month, it's not even funny. Really? So these, you know, I've been, I've been riding the guys hard on this one saying, come on, man. Like, I want to celebrate that one. We're going to be so, right we sat down with our like We sat down with our coach um, on Wednesday. Is that when we coach? When the hell do we coach? Today's Wednesday. Tuesday. It was yesterday. Yeah. Um, and she challenged us to do some stuff because, like, Boomtown's our CRM and full transparency, like, because I don't think everybody's crushing it with every lead gen source. We produce a lot of Boomtown leads. We do not close a lot of Boomtown leads. Sure. Right? So well, we were challenging the Explain the different. All right. I hate when people say Boomtown leads. I, I know. I know. That. I get not, it. That's I get not it. a real thing. It's yeah. not a real thing, right? Yeah. But the, the leads that we're sourcing, we're essentially calling, like, our Facebook leads are essentially we're calling our Boomtown leads. For what the most we part. call Google, Boomtown leads are a combination of our Google pay per click leads and, and our yeah. Facebook leads. Yeah. Okay. And we've, what, we got two? I think two so far? Is what she told us. This, this year, year. Yeah. yeah. Only, so we're on pace to do one a month. And we just have so much more opportunity than yeah. that. So we're focused on it every Tuesday for an hour. The whole team and Brian and I, every Tuesday from two to three, essentially going to hammer those and just see what we can do in a four-week sprint. I mean, I like it. Uh, you know, I mean, I wish you would have brought that up to me beforehand because now we can just change the topic and dive into that. I thought we were going to talk about coronavirus. We, we yeah, should talk about coronavirus. About. I mean, we, if you watched we, my Facebook Live video today. Did you pull like, out your, your sheet from FEMA from 2006 in your no, Facebook Live? No, not yet, but I, <laughs> I saved it for the show. I can't release everything. Nick has a uh, list that he is a checklist for his preparation for the, the oncoming inevitable pandemic um here it is it's from fema from 2006 <laughs> yeah they haven't really updated uh, it <laughs> so you got to be sure to get travelers checks <laughs> if you can figure out where to get those here's one that was interesting to me books games puzzles or other activities for children now 
I'm not a child myself. This is pre-iPad also. Yes, but I would say if you don't already have a tablet in a global pandemic, your child's activity is survival. <laughs> so I just don't know how many puzzles you're going to have time to do. Well, I do have a feeling that it's going to be, especially with children, it's going to be yelling at them not to p- pick shit up and put it in their mouths. And now they've got the virus. Can and you I, imagine? And now you've got to figure out what to do. Like, do they turn into a zombie? I don't have kids. I don't have kids, but this is what I would imagine being a parent is like. Being a parent, from my perspective, not having children, is preparing for months for the inevitable global pandemic and busting your ass to make sure that your family is super duper safe and well taken care of and you're prepping you have tons of food and filtered water and all kinds of stuff and the one thing you forget is puzzles and your kids won't stop bitching about puzzles once you're in the room underground that you're locked in for six months all they talk about is puzzles and you're just so frustrated because they're not appreciating anything that you did yes (laughs) they don't appreciate anything that you really did and they did nothing to help prepare like they didn't even clean their rooms in the house they're not staying in anymore. All you wanted to do was for them to clean the house so that when you got over the pandemic, the house was clean. They didn't even do that. You did everything, and now they're just bitching about puzzles. I can tell Brian doesn't have kids because he not realize that's what they do all the time, yeah. pandemic or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way kids Here, are. Here's the main thing that I'm looking at. Like, If anything happens, like, wouldn't you at least want to be somewhat prepared? Yeah. Like, I knew what prepared the, looked Remember like. the gas yeah. shortage of two years ago? And, you know, you're like, shit, I'm I'm low on gas. Where do you go? You can't just drive across town and hope that they have some. So So what, do you have barrels of petroleum in your garage, right? Like, that's just an unsolvable problem in 2020. It's not unsolvable. You can go and stock up on on fuel. Like, my brother's talking about, he's like, I need to order some diesel. (laughs) I'm like... Where, where do you for, keep for it? What? You just keep it outside, I guess. I you just know. keep it you're just in the driveway? I don't know. It's not that I'm giving you shit for preparing. I just I just thought you could get... Just, how often does FEMA come out with a new list? Because this I one's 14 years maybe old. Maybe every 20 years. I guess, is that the most recent list on the <laughs> FEMA website? That's, I, I that would be a FEMA. shame if that's where our taxpayer yeah. dollars are going, is to lists that only get updated once every 14 well, years. Maybe they're wanting... Is that the Hurricane Katrina list? <laughs> AK, AK wanted to know how we prep for Y2K. I didn't. I went to bed that night and woke up the next day, and it turned out everything but here's was the thing, fine. But even if that happened, like we weren't. I don't think we were so connected at that time, no. like that we would feel that pain. No. But here's what's going to happen, right? You know, if if a pandemic happens on that, it's going to affect your food first, right? Yes. People go just think about it when they think the ice storm is coming, and. And all of a sudden, they go do a run on grocery stores. I agree with your entire premise. The effect economically and logistically of a global pandemic is farther reaching than anybody I think can imagine. Your checklist is what's funny to me. And to answer your question about Y2K, I was 13 and I was already so punk rock, I was just embracing it. I was talking (laughs) to my dad on New Year's. I was wasted. I was like, Dad, whatever happens... We're in this together. We're going to be okay. <laughs> Let's just ride it out. And then I shot off a firework and went back inside. See, they thought they were coming to a real estate show. <laughs> well, this is what keeps them entertained and fun, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, this, you know, I think that's why people keep coming back to this. But all right, so so what I really wanted to, to bring, you know, talk to you guys about is, is Wayne Salomons, who was on episode 50, two or three shows ago? Yeah, two shows. Something yeah. like that. Two 49, 50. You can go back and listen to Wayne. Um, he's the coach of Hero Nation, and he runs this uh, mastermind group for business owners. And I don't know what that bouncing noise is. Is that you, Matt? I don't think so. I'm hearing I'm something bouncing around. Still. Um, but um, he runs this mastermind group called the Titans Table. And it, it's a it's a group of business owners and, and leaders, and it's a, you come in together into a room and it, you're really you're really laying out where what your struggles are, right? And, and he's got a couple you know a couple times throughout the day you get in the hot seat and you throw out what your struggles are and you just get bombarded with with everyone throwing out their ideas, right? And and or what what you think you're saying and how they're receiving it and relaying it back to you, you can see how there's a misalignment with the way your brain processes your, your how you perceive your business and how it's coming across mm-hmm. and how to explain it, or maybe you can't even explain it at all, right? Where it's so complicated that people are like, all right, what, what, right. what, what the fuck do you do, yeah. <laughs> right? And so that was, that was the, the thing that really struck out to me on this, like, you know, the, the, that business owners are having the same troubles that we are, sure, right, in, in the real estate. It's, it's all the same. So 
One thing that stuck out is that everyone's struggling with marketing and social media, yep. right? You know, we, we spent a lot of time talking about making videos, creating Facebook groups, you know, like the only real estate group worth being a part of, right? Yep. We were one of the few in there I w that actually had the, a, a decent sized group going on. Um, how to be able to, you know, identifying what your three core messages or beliefs are so that, that if you're trying to attract employees or team members or, or find your right clientele or customer, right? Or, or are you able to really identify what your three core beliefs are? Yep. Um, how to be able to tell those messages easily and understandable to consumers. Yep. Um, you know, who we think we are speaking to typically, you know, actually is not really the right audience, right? Who we think, like, let's say we think we're, we're talking to um, expired listings, sure. right? Well, our message may speak to homeowners who've lived in their house for 15 yeah, years, 100%. or or we think we're at, we're talking to conservative people, and it's really identifying where most of our makeup is is moderate to to liberal lean, right. right? And and that was interesting because there was a there was a lady in there that uh, is a dietitian, and she runs a podcast and and has a cooking show on YouTube on YouTube, and I th if I remember correctly, I believe it's 58 percent of the people watching that. Were men, really? If you ask everybody in that room, they thought it was it was going to be a female-dominated listener or audience. Yeah, for sure. Right. So again, what you think your message or what you think your audience is could be something completely different or or the opposite. Um, and that we truly all suck at marketing and having systems in place to help us with that. Yeah. It's funny that you bring up the marketing thing too, because I was just driving today and thinking about like, we have an agent in our office who I, th who I think does a pretty good job. Just a solo agent does everything on their own. I don't think they have a TC. And I was driving today because, you know, the only real estate podcast is going on the road tomorrow morning at 845. <laughs> And I'm we are so pretty much checking out, out after already. this. <laughs> yes. So I was thinking about that, right? Like, like how much stuff I had to do still today, yeah. but how much stuff was already happening in the background. And I was thinking about how, like, the marketing I used to put together for my listings, yep. just how shitty it was. Not because I didn't try. It was because I suck at marketing. Yeah. And identifying who I'm trying to speak to. That was something that didn't reveal itself until we started doing this show. For yep. years, I was just trying to talk to everybody. Right. Now, there's three or four specific... I want to speak to real estate agents. Yep. I want to speak to past clients. And I want to speak to people who are sphere in my world who might have referrals, right? 100%. I'm now fully aware of who my audience is. And I had an opportunity to talk to you know Adam Hergenrother about this when we were at reu Family Reunion last week. And he said, you know, he's always said for years, like getting hyper focused will free up a lot of your time and sure. free up a lot of your stress. And I never really believed that. And now that I'm in a space where I really, from a business standpoint, know who yep. I'm supposed to be talking to, it does make it a little bit easier. It's, it's jumping back to the first one, it totally does. And you said, I think the first thing you mentioned was, was just like, we don't really understand our businesses or something like that. Like one of the things this kind of parlays with marketing really, really well is like, it, it hasn't really occurred to me until like the last 18 months or so and really even more so since since Matt and I, you know, partnered and, and, and our business has really grown a ton that like I've really mentally made that transition from being real estate agent to business owner. And you can do that kind of theoretically, like you run a company rather than being a, a, an agent, right? Like that's an easy thing to say. And it's sort of an easy thing to enact when you focus more on your P&L and expenses and kind of inputs and outputs and ROI and all that stuff like that. But I've embraced it more mentally in the sense that like, real estate is not a secular business in the sense that like, we are just like hair salons. Or any other service-based industry, yeah, in, in general, right? Like you can learn so much from so many other business owners. I would honestly venture to say that if you're learning your strategies, specifically marketing strategies, other real estate agents are one of the worst places to look because a lot of us are almost like we're so lost all the time, right? Like we get a lot of our stuff and our ideas and all the cool shit that we do from way other industries and stuff like that. Like, I just think a lot of agents, and I would say most agents, sort of the prototypical agent kind of thinks that like real estate is different. Like I need to do what real estate agents do. Like I need to, like for the longest time it was postcards, park benches, you know, newspaper, like whatever it was. Like everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody did the same stuff. Now everybody's doing the same stuff. It's just different stuff. But like I, we are in such a cool transitional space in our industry right now where I think that we, I've talked about this a million times in classes and on here, like 
You have a, more of an opportunity to make your business your own more than ever before. And I don't think that looking to other realtors is always the best way to 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 figure out your marketing strategy specifically. Look at what other cool ass businesses are doing. A great example is what's going on down the road right now at Chalk Talk Casino. Did y'all see that? On the building? Bro. It's a genius. Now, That's what, the dopest thing in the world. The, the, so in Dallas, we have that implosion that got botched, right? And so, and then, and then they tried to knock it down with like a thimble over the past couple of days. So it's obviously going to be there for a little bit. They said it should be done yeah. today or tomorrow, but there's so, no. So for our national I think it's a run, audience, it's got to be a running joke. For our national audience, they tried to demolish a building in in, in Dallas, and the core of it, the elevator shafts and stairwells, just didn't demolish it all. But it's leaning. Now they're hitting it with the world's smallest wrecking ball <laughs> and trying to take it down that way. And they're losing that fight. I think it's standing up straighter, honestly. <laughs> yeah, they're knocking it back into yeah. alignment. Choctaw put one of those like uh, those light ads that's like shining up on the side of the building that says, want to try your luck elsewhere? Yeah, it's like, like have that. better luck here or have something. Have better luck here. And like, you know, it's a Choctaw ad. And it's just and genius. It's advertising their casino. And I'm like, what kind of gorilla shit can we do? Yeah. Right, like that's a brilliant idea that has nothing to do with real estate. But how could we take something like that, you know, and and do that in our real estate business? Like, that's so much cooler than taking out ads in a magazine, you know, or or, or farming with postcards or, and stuff, or doing it at a high level like that versus sure. where people are going and taking photos in front of it and and yeah. leaning up against it and, and saying, "Lean on me." The story was they right. paid some dude five hundred bucks under the table who does stuff like this. I heard that on the on the, the radio on the ticket the this ticket, morning. Yeah, the ticket. There's a dude that. who's like an underground dude, who he, he'll do stuff like this for you for five hundred dollars though. Like that guy needs to be charging. I'd a pay five hundred dollars to have my face on the side of that building for a couple 100%. of days. You can't pay him more because it's highly illegal. If you got too much money off it, they'd find out who he was. I think. That but how is that illegal? Just that you're you're throwing an image like it's just a. I don't think that part of it. I think you have to get close enough that you're kind of like on the property and stuff. People have been trespassing on those ground for all week long. Mm-hmm. I don't think they really care too no, much. Not at all. I do think you – from, a, and I know we're getting deep on marketing and you were talking about a lot of other stuff. But I do think taking advantage of current events is a huge part of it. The other podcast that Brian and I shoot, that's all it is, right? It's just talking about current events in depth. It's super relevant for a week. Yep. And then because we're the society we are, it's gone. 100%. Right, that's the hardest thing about marketing is staying relevant as quickly as you need to be. But that, and that's one thing that John Reinhardt, and he's part of Hero Nation, right? Yep. An amazing video guy, um, and probably calling him video guy is not serving the, it's not doing justice to him. Super good beard. Yes, amazing, amazing beard. <laughs> but I mean, he he talked about when when making your videos and making your content, you know, making it that evergreen, right? So. You know, like the the other podcasts yes. you guys shoot, where it's more to, you know recent topic related, right? It it's not it's not going to continue having that right. evergreen life. Meaning, you know, we have to continue it, it's, to create. It's new relevant shit, yeah. next year, and people are still listening to it five years from now. Yep. So, you know, take for example, I, I went down the rabbit hole of going down the prepping videos yesterday, <laughs> and there was one that had like two million views, and it was from 2011, and and that guy. That guy's still is still relevant. Yep. Most of the stuff he's talking about was is, it specific. Well, I don't remember what we were prepping for in 2011. These are just doomsday preppers. Oh, they think, so they these, think these dudes just stay ready. Yes, yeah. this guy's definitely. I mean, <laughs> he talked about uh, this is. I mean, this is going down that rabbit hole where, like, you know, you 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 buy all this food and then make sure that you eat it to make sure that you know, and then re- replenish it yeah. so it always stays. It doesn't expire. Right, because a lot of this stuff expires, yeah. And so they just go through and, and continue eating this, sh- the, the, the stuff. The stuff that how lasts for like re- eight. How does it replenish? What do well, you, mean? you, you just go like, and like buy say it. you have rice, right? Okay. You yeah. bought rice. You just you go and buy more rice, and you eat the rice. Because yeah. oh. uh, if you just bought like all the MREAs or the Mountain House stuff, you wouldn't be able to poop. No, yeah, so like no it way. would just stop you up so bad it wouldn't even matter. So you got to eat real food, or you're That's just going to be miserable. Yeah. So I mean, so it's it's making that evergreen content to bring it back home to what we're talking about, because um, we could do a prepping show. That's all the day. first time poop has been mentioned in 52 episodes. That is true. I think Derek, that is, is that true? I think that's probably yeah. It's got to be true. <laughs> um, but making that evergreen content that's going to live, yes. and, and that's something that t- they talked about. You know, there was I was sitting next to a guy that's a math tutor, and who runs a math tutoring business, and I'm like, bro, like I would create a Facebook group for teachers, yeah. right, and I would be yep. helping them, you know, giving them free content, free information, yep. 
And he's like, well, teachers can't send referrals. I said, bullshit. Yeah, what are you I said, here's about? the thing. Guess what? They're sending those. They're sending those under the table referrals. Yeah. I said, go and become that expert to those teachers who are frustrated with those kids who aren't learning it at fast enough, and then they're going home and create a parents group because what? Guess what? Those kids are coming home, and and the parents are trying to help them. They're like, that's not how the teacher told me to do it. Yeah. And then you throw your hands up and you walk away and like, well, you're gonna fail, and you know, hopefully. <laughs> You know, hopefully you're you're good in sales. Yeah, okay. hopefully you're pretty because you're dumb. Hundred percent, right? And so, like as a parent. so that was a lot of that conversation that that I saw with these business owners is is we all we're all struggling with that, and we're all trying to look for for the answers that other people have, and it's and it's digging deep into who who is who is your core, what's your core message? Yeah. you know, who, how are you going to you know, how are you going to, you know, like like John mentioned, he's like, how are you going to make an injustice right? So what's the in- yeah. injustice in this industry? Like if we were talking about, you know, recruiting to the teams is there's a lot of unfortunately bad real estate teams out sure. there who will who will just promise you the world. They're not delivering. They're cherry picking the leads. Right. They're giving you the crumbs. They want you to come do the 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 shitty work that that most people right. don't want to do while they reap the rewards. And so, how are you going to make that injustice right? And it's like yep. that that's your that's now you're building your your marketing your videos around all of that, yep. right? And and speaking to that and to the consumers. And so, one cool thing that that um, Wayne had shared with me, it's called um, my story mystorybrand.com 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 and this is Cha-ching. where right yeah this is where you can go and build out your your vision right so who is your character that you're wanting to speak to you know what do they want what problems do they have right right what keeps them up at night right so this is what we call like the avatar you know yep. like um, you know, you know what's what's that avatar? So what's your character on this? Um, and then who's the villain? Right. So like, if we were speaking to consumers, is real estate agents shitty real estate agents? That's the, the I don't want to be that dude. But that's so going back to that question is 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 what's the injustice in real estate? Misrepresentation. That's got to be it, Mis- right? You know, what do we? What's the objection we? Have to overcome more than anything. I, I would say for us, it's my last agent let me down in yeah. some manner of speaking, lack, right? Like lack of trust. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's I mean, we have we have trust. one of our incredible buyers agents right now that has a, a, a person that came to an open house last weekend twice. He came, then he went and got his wife and came back, wanted to to make an offer on that house, and it was one of our listings. And even though she is on our team and and we all provide the same service. That person was like, no, I only want to speak with a listing agent. The last time I had a buyer's agent, it was a terrible experience. Yep. Like, that's, I think that's it's an insane injustice, right? And there's some sort of manif- man- manis- manifestation, manifestation uh, of that issue. Like, I think that's our probably our biggest competition, right? I, and that's, like, not to be, like, totally... But, but here's the thing. It's also getting deeper to this. So this is something that... That when when I'm sitting in that room and, and I'm and I'm writing out like my core message to to building people to our team, right? I said, oh, it's lead gen, it's predictability of business. You know, get out that commission roller coaster. It's plug and play. And they're like, yes, but that's not really. Those are symptoms, not yeah, causes. That's, yeah. Well, that but that's not your core message right. either. So so and I'm like, all right. So so it's it's it talks about what is what is the core here. Come on. Um, so, so like the problem. Can you hold your tablet up for two seconds? The size of Nick's tablet. It's like the television I had when I was 11. It's bigger than my first car. <laughs> Dad, can you get this? It's ridiculous. Anyway, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt. But here's the thing. Like, I also had the Rocket Notebook. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And here's the thing. Like, this eliminates one step of writing in the Rocket Notebook, taking your and phone out, yep, the, scanning yeah. it into the app. So now I can just do this on the, the, big, the big iPad. For sure. Um, and and it's like all right, what what are what are what are agents having? So the external problem is they're overwhelmed with options. They they lack sure. money. Um, they're not getting the the support. So what's the injustice? Where's the justice on this? What are the three steps that uh, that my agents do to guarantee their success and start building around that? Right. So from the consumer yeah. side, it is it is you know lack of confidence in their agent you know they're not believing them because yeah. because you know their last agent told them something and they did not deliver i think that's a really good one from the agent side of things though is that like we said we have too many options and not enough money agents notoriously 
are so addicted to shiny toys, I think we do everything half-assedly. Like, finding your groove and sticking to it long enough that you can... Like, if you ask, I think, kind of the average agent, you know, what their kind of growth engine is, they're sort of all over the place, right? And for, for a lot of... I mean, for most agents, and this is what you should be striving for, most of your business should be sphere, right? How you build a real estate business is selling real estate to your sphere, and then on the back end, every day, you work to generate more people in your sphere, right? Like, you work to grow your database. You grow your database every day, and then you put more, and then you sell more real estate to your database, right? The mechanism by which we grow our database and communicate with our database, there is a smorgasbord of options there, right? We get so distracted by every cool little thing that we don't really commit to any of them. That, I think, is an injustice on the marketing front. That we just don't do anything at a high yeah, level. Yeah, and we should almost we should almost do this. And, it's and, not a lack of resources; it's a lack of utilization. Yeah, we and, and I definitely want to bring Wayne back on for this because because you know when he's when he's actually questioning some of these things, you're like, oh shit, that's what I thought was was the core message, or what I thought I was speaking to is not right. Right. And so so from that, where where you know we look at it from again, you know. The the agents are not delivering on what they're saying. They're over they're over promising and under, under delivering. Right. They're telling the the person they're telling the clients what they want to hear. That's the injustice, right? So that's fair. So so then it's breaking down of of you coming in here and and writing that wrong. And but how do you show that? Right? You show that through through evidence of success campaigns. It's 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 um, um, they talk about you know you know. What's the problem? You know, you know, where's your, where's the empathy, the authority? You know, who gives them the plan, the process, the agreement? Right. You know, where's the call to action? So if you look at the funnel, right? So, so how how John built this out, and and this is where I have a little bit, I may have to process it a little bit more. So he's talking about the funnel. Sure. Everything flows in the top. He's like, you know, you know, the middle part is designed for us to nurture and yep. then to funnel them down, right? Sure. You know, he talked about, for example, let's say if you're wanting to to attract agents into your world, he said, he said, do do generous giveaways and and record it. And so show away like, let's say we had ten thousand dollars on this table. We're all gonna we're like, all right, the first you know the the last person who has their hand on this will will get the ten thousand. We video it and you know make a mockery out of that or really? whatever, right? <laughs> and you. and you know then you promote it out there. Sure. And and he and John was talking about how you start seeing that and people are like, How is he giving away ten thousand dollars? How are you giving away all this money? And then it right. funnels it down. I'm more of a direct response guy where I wanna just hit the target market. Like I wanna just go after agents, I wanna nail what their problem is, what's keeping them up at night. Sure. So there's there's several so many ways that we can we can build this ship. Yep. And 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 you know, make sure that it's on the right course. I think you're going to attract different people with different methods too, right? Like, and it, we have to get out of this mindset that there's one single marketing, one single social media post, one single video yes. that's going to be attractive to everybody. And I'm learning that just on a really micro level right now with how I'm running my social media. I think we talked about it last week with just the different people are engaging with complete. I could post the exact same content in on Instagram stories and post it on my Facebook feed. And I'm going to get a completely different group of people engaging with sure. it. And I think we make the mistake of thinking that there's one size fit all. There's one lead generation source that we can automate instead of just staying nimble in all of our efforts and making sure that we're addressing whatever's hot at any given moment, right? Like Brian and I are firmly convinced that texting is going to become increasingly more difficult in our business soon. Yeah. But we're going to take advantage of it as much as possible until they shut that shit down, yep. right? And then we have to figure something else we'll out. Figure out the next well, thing. Yeah, because texting will will there will eventually be some type of it's spam an opt-in blockers. situation where Op you just can't even. Only. It's yeah. going to be similar to email, and so yeah. So then, guess what? Direct mail comes back into play. Absolutely, right? I think it already has. Isn't that the nature of everything, though? It just cycles back. I mean, we do the same thing politically, which I'm not going to get in, but we we get we we just swing from one end to the other over this long period of time. Right until people get tired of this side shit, and then they swing back the other way. Right, it's the exact same thing I think with marketing and real estate. Like we're going to see this old school approach work a lot more soon. Pretty soon, I'm just going to get, you know, I'm going to go back real old school. I'm going to put all my my ads on on bus benches. There you go. But I'm going to put the bus benches in people's front yards. <laughs> and He's going to bring gonna, the bus bench I'm to gonna, them, and, I, and I'm going to reroute the buses through that through their neighborhood. So oh, they sure want, love that. So they want to sell. The only way that they can sell. 
or the only way that we get rid of the buses of their neighborhood is if we sell their property. Here's what I'm going to do. Did Just I miss the, the billionaire idea yes. uh, <laughs> intro here? Let me, yeah, give, exactly. let me give you a billionaire idea. Because here's the thing. I'm already decided I'm deferring all of my billionaire idea time this week to coronavirus talk. So let me drop in my billionaire idea here real fast. Do we need to play the... Do, do we need to drop the, the billionaire It's too idea? early. It's too early. I'm going to start a very elaborate campaign to have every house in the city TP'd. I'm going to get on Craigslist. I'm going to hire minions. Macy's going to be involved, right? We're going to TP all the houses. We're going to TP it with branded toilet paper from one of our competitors. Yes. So like a different real estate team will TP every house in the city. And then I'm going to start fake social media accounts where they're just, like, talking mad shit about how they TP'd everybody. Like, they're going to, like, own it online, right? Then my branding effort is going to be like, was your house TP'd? Call her group, DFW. We'll come clean it up. The and I'll, honestly, I'll just get Macy to clean it up. <laughs> and so, so like, we'll be the, the knights in shining armor because that's an injustice. Here's yes. the thing. You got there TP'd. You go. We're solving your problem. That sounds like the time Michael Scott tried to, like, let the tear out, air out of everybody's tires <laughs> to, like, to get them all to work together. And they were like, why do your, does your car not have a tear let out? He's like, they wrote me this really mean note. <laughs> They're just going to know it was you. You're going to be the only one without TP out there. It's a terrible idea. I don't even know where to go from that. So if you don't know where to go from Still got that, 15 minutes and you're struggling to take listings, go head on over to touracademy.com backslash, 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 take 10, touracademy.com backslash, take 10. Sign up for the webinar. You'll learn our ticks. Whoa. Emergency break of the week. That's right. (laughs) Tips, tricks, and techniques (laughs) on what we do to take 10 plus listings every single month. 845 tomorrow, boys. It's a good thing that we keep this show PG all the time, though. Because that that was over the line. Yeah, (laughs) it was. That was. Okay. And then you'll be prompted to sign up for our tour academy for $1. $1. You'll want to be a part of our Zoom mastermind calls that we do twice a month. Um, where you can hear even better stuff that we talk about. 100%. On that thing. Way okay. more planned out. Serious stuff. All right. For real, though, you need to, I, I think where this has kind of got my, going, my mind going now, we are all over the place with our vernacular today. Um, we talked about isolating the, or figuring out the injustice, right? Isolate the injustice and then figure out the mechanism by which, people to bring, by which to bring people into your world. One of the biggest problems that we face in real estate is that with uh, this is how I will say that real estate is secular? Is people don't think about it all the time. I don't need our product or service once, but every five to seven years, right? Like I need Q-tips every few weeks, right? So like if that's what I was marketing, ass ears you got. Well, dude, I, I I buy everything in small packs. I do the opposite of prepping. I'm living so long term. I just don't think, and, and I, I buy in small batches. I'm so frivolous with that stuff. Anyway. Um, so like it's relevant, right? But 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 real estate, we do not think about it all the time. So rectifying the injustice, right? You can't just put out, and this is what I would avoid doing. If I'm gonna start, say, you know, whatever my marketing mechanism is, a YouTube channel, right? If I make just a YouTube channel about like here's the things to avoid when listing your house, or here's what to look for when buying, and that's all I have. That's only going to be relevant to people once every five to seven years. It's going to be very hard to do that if all you're trying to do is rectify the injustice. What Matt and I are so brilliant that we've done, and I say that in the utmost sarcastic way, but part of our master plan is that we do a lot of content that has nothing to do with real estate but does have to do with our community, is engaging, and then it gets us more relationships, more viewers, more eyeballs, so that when that just when that when that injustice does need to be rectified for the people that we've drawn in through that mechanism, we're there to also educate, right? So like we've we started doing things where we just, you know, we started with taco videos, right, which get a ton of play and people were like are you know we have fun doing them, people love them. Now we're starting to do more things, you know, that are real estate related. Best neighborhoods in Dallas and why, right? What's going on in different areas? What to avoid when you're doing this and that? Like stuff that's really important. And that's kind of our whole, this is kind of a metaphor for any marketing strategy is that we traditionally have only marketed real estate related stuff. If your clientele or your target demographic isn't seeing you as a more of a community ambassador, right? Or a community export or just or just an engaging character in the community, you're going to have a harder time drawing them in because you're only speaking their language for a brief moment in time every five to seven years. Speak their language all the time, 
and then also be the one that is there in the the small window where they need to speak the 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 language of the injustice that you're trying to rectify. Well, then and, and to to piggyback on that, I'm going to mess this stat up, but it it's your marketing message is only going to appeal to one to two percent of people at any given time because sure. they're in that that mindset that that, that sounds frame, like a real stat. It probably is um, that that frame of mind to be ready in the next six, 12 months or so, exactly. or even less than that, right. right? So you're now, with that, you're now throwing and missing 98 to 99% yes. of the market, right? So when we look at that opportunity, it's like, all right, you know, you 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 know, you talk about the taco videos, it's, it's more about, again, we go back to infotainment, right? Where you guys are doing a, a really amazing job at that. And, and so, you know, one, you know, what we, what we talked about before is, is from the marketing side of things, or even anything in general, one thing that I, I took away from, from the Titans table with, with Wayne Salomons was, was when you start thinking about all this shit, it gets overwhelming. Yeah. Right. Yep. You're like, man, I need to make some money now. Right. But I don't really want to think long term. I don't want to have to make taco videos and and I like eating tacos, but I don't need to. I don't have the time resources to commit to that because I need sure. to go be making calls and and trying to meet buyers and sellers now. So, you know, we talk. He talked about you, you make a list of must, should and coulds, yes. you know, and and figure out. All right. What is what? Sh you know, what could you should you be doing? Could you be doing and must you be doing right, right now? Yep. Right. And then narrow those and then prioritize it, prioritize it from there. Right. Um, but when we talk about and I'm trying to find it um you know from the funnel from the funnel side of things things that that show the heart or confidence that are entertainment related yes there's going to be your top of the funnel 100 percent, right so those taco videos the 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 secret podcast of y'all's um Shh. oh i need to whisper it the yeah. secret no that's podcast. just i just started doing that or is that the <laughs> is that the name of it yes the name of it just shh. <laughs> It might have been better <laughs> with seven H's. <laughs> and then from there, then you're going to funnel those people down. Once they get ready, they're like, oh, man, I need to uh, – I really like tacos. And every time I eat tacos, right. now I think of Brian and Matt. Oh, now I need to refinance or sell my home. Yes. I know that they are in real estate, so at least let me reach out to them. Sure. And now, now you've, you've, you're peppering them as well with, with more you know, informational-style content – that is related to real estate, mm -hmm. and then you're then you've got your CTAs in there, your call to actions. Yeah. Well, like I mean, take a cue from like one of the objections that we try to overcome all the time, or like one of the big letdown things to hear all the time. Like take a cue from that, right? How many times have you been, you know, nurturing a lead or working somebody? And they're like, you know what, my my daughter in law just got a real estate license. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and use her, right? Well, why would they use that person? Because they have a relationship with them. They have a relationship with them through proximity, but you're still going to use people that you have. Like, they're not using their daughter-in-law because she's just a killer agent. If she just got a license and you're using her, which is something that's happened to all of us, you're using it because of the proximity of the relationship, or the relationship, which only happens, you know, that's just pure happenstance, right? Take a cue from that, right? Why not try to market at the top of your funnel in a way that just builds relationships with people? When I say building relationships, understand that in 2020, or whenever year you're watching this, right? Like building relationships doesn't happen interpersonally anymore. Building relationships happens by what you broadcast out into the world, whether that's via social media, your marketing, whatever. Like put stuff out that is going to meet people where they're at in the broadest way possible, right? Build relationships with people and then speak to their needs whenever that time comes. I think the exciting thing for real estate agents or any entrepreneur to realize, like when you talk about people get overwhelmed, first off, it doesn't all start out like this. Not like we have some huge thing, but like if, if you just go back not too far in the recent past. This didn't even start out this like this. This didn't even start off like this <laughs> one, right? And secondly, when you do get to a place where you're putting out enough content, enough marketing, the great thing is the, it, it defines your people for you. Yes. You no longer really have to worry about defined. I've been so concerned about that for so long defining who my audience was. Guess what happened? I just started being myself everywhere yeah. unapologetically yes. and my audience 100% defined itself. And we I think we've talked about that a lot recently, but it feels really great to know that people are just quietly exiting and other people are loudly supporting. Yep. And it doesn't matter. Now I'm not to, you know, Casella posted this the other day and I, I mean I I personally love Brian Casella. Like I think he's great. But the, he posted something the other day just about like, you know, I'm sure that dude gets a shitload of haters. Right? Yes, sir. He posts about his fast cars. He shows his boxing video, right? He dunks basketballs. Like, there are I'm going to tell you right now, BC, next time you're here in Dallas, we'll spar a few rounds. 
it'll be a good social media thing. That's what I I'm like saying, that. right? You don't put enough sparring videos out, and that's that's what that's my world. It's some shadow boxing, right? Yeah. But still, here's the thing: is people, I, I'm sure that guy gets a ton of hate. I also am 100 percent positive that he is completely himself, and sure. he, there is a lot of money and opportunity that flows into his world 100%. because he is himself, right? And people think they got to be something else. Well, I think your brand will never be as strong as it will be when you are yourself. Yep, 100. percent I mean, Nick, you've even experienced this a little bit, right? Like, you've, you've said this in the past. You, when you first started doing video, it was all educational. It was very black and white, kind of moved down a line, and it didn't get anywhere. Yeah, it, it did some stuff, right? right? right. It, it did and it didn't. It's not it, – look, it didn't. But you can even watch that old stuff. It doesn't feel like you, like the no, authentic yeah. you. But even today, like even the stuff I do today, like I, I – you know, one of my partners, Chauncey, who's, who kills it. She and, murders like, it We've got to have her on here when it comes to video. Like she's she's amazing. That's a huge her. miss that we haven't had. Sure. How have we known her for as long as we have? Know, she's never right? been on this show. Well, We're such misogynists. Been, I, That's I've been the problem. saving that one. <laughs> I didn't want to just bring them all out because we, we need so her many for great season people. two. We do. The Starts next, next week. Next season two. Season We're two. We're doing 52 <laughs> episodes a season. It's like an old sitcom. Yes. Yeah, season two, we'll, we'll work on bringing Chauncey Famine, who's, who <laughs> fam, she's amazing at the YouTube content. And, and look, where, where she talked about is like just being yourself. And I said, look, I, I'm not as, entertain, as, as entertaining as she is. Right? No, you're not. No, I'm not. Neither are you guys. You're one of my best friends, and you're not. No, but <laughs> but what I can do is is find entertaining style entertainment style topics, mm -hmm. and and leverage that out. Hundred percent. So guess what I'm doing? I'm doing one over the coronavirus. So get ready. That one's coming out. Just Wait, Facebook. is this? What's the medium? Is it YouTube? Is it's this... gonna be. It's gonna be on YouTube. God. So Brian and I have had an opportunity recently through a couple of people reaching out to us to do some challenge style videos, which yes. I think are gonna murder. So we're doing one with. Haas group soon. Uh, we're doing one with uh, what are our girls? What, I don't know what their actual name uh, team name is. It's the Arlene. Shit. If you're Arlene, watching this, I'm comment so your comment your team name. Yeah, what is but, it? Uh, Who is it's, it? It's 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 Arlene uh, Antis and, and her business partner both do. They they're way into dogs and like their whole bit is yeah. like pets and stuff. But we're gonna do a very similar type challenge with them. And the great thing is, I think the collaboration style stuff allows you to get in front of another audience. Sure. And you're not really gonna. I'm not gonna pirate. Arlene's business. You know what's going to happen? My people and Arlene people are both going to see that we're equally super cool. Yeah, and love it. And they're going to see us doing more stuff for sure. I see Corey Thompson just commenting. He said he needs on here. And and I saw Corey post today. Corey Corey's up in his game when it comes to social media. For sure. He uh, he made a post that I screenshotted Corey. I put it into my Facebook internal group for my team where it talked about Grant Cardone. I think it was like sent out 1.7 million emails. Uh, inviting people to to get let, let me see what it says because it record out on 1.7 emails yeah 1. email marketing million. 1. 1. 7, 1. 7 million that's a big server right uh, and to to funnel it all the way down to invite uh to get only it was like twelve thousand people to an event mm -hmm. right um still geez here it is so grant cardone sent out 177 million emails to get 12,000 people in the room he also has six million followers on facebook and and he says a lot of people quit after making 100 calls this shit hashtag this shit ain't easy yes yeah. think about that easy. that dude has six million people following him he had to send out 1.7 million emails to get twelve thousand people in a room Jeez. if you just knock that down in percentages that's i mean think about your own business in that yeah, how many people right? are you sending it to and then figure out grant cardone's influence it's true because we do like 14 15 thousand for our live events and we get like 40 people yeah 40 of the best people. Sometimes. Sometimes. And How many sometimes people showed have, up to that? Sometimes we have six. To the karaoke event. Oh, shit. So karaoke? Oh, that was like 80. Yeah. Yeah. 80? Yeah. Really? That, that looked killer, dude. That Bro, looked killer. the karaoke event was so fun. I didn't get to go because Luke was just shy of the coronavirus. He had the regular kid flu. <laughs> the so regular virus. Just, yeah, the kid just flu. puking and snotting everywhere. <laughs> All right, Derek. Quick. I'm going to defer my time. Let's talk about this. Hold on. Quick question for you. Yep. Let's talk. God. Is this coronavirus? Yes. I'm right. just, Derek, Whatever, let's, yeah. just, let's just take it home from here because I yep. know Nick has just been – he's like a crackhead right now just crazy, just waiting to talk about the coronavirus I'm really so bad. Like, let me – like, I'm really concerned about this coronavirus. And here's the thing, like – I did something for the first time ever last week, and my hair lady talked me into doing it. It's a weird, it's a weird connection. Yeah, it is. It See is. where it goes. She talked me into waxing the inside of my nostrils. Done it. Done it? Yeah. What? Yeah. That's real? So Hell yeah, bro. I got a video on my phone right now. Dude, I just dude. wait until I'm in bed it. at night and I'm in the dark and I just pull them all out. I should have videoed it. Amazing. First off, it felt like getting punched in the nose. <laughs> I bet. She was like, oh, it doesn't hurt. I'm like, mm, you're lying. 
because that shit hurt. They do the popsicle stick situation, yes. essentially? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And But then I'm starting to think, I'm like, was those hairs in there going to help block out the coronavirus? You are And a now I just got rid of all of it. That's you, a, wait, okay. I, you started this under the pretense that I thought she was advising you on how to avoid the coronavirus. No. but I would think I'd want more <laughs> hairs That's what nose. I'm saying. Dude, now it's gone. I'll it's there in there. I'll stick a wig up there, man. It's all there as there. much protection now, as I now can get. Now I need get. a Merkin. If you're, <laughs> if you so, so your your hairstyle is at the worst possible time in your existence. Finally got through to you to wax your. Nose. Probably been trying to get you to do this for years. If you end up with coronavirus because of that decision, man, is that irony what Brian hit you like a cartoon anvil? I've been in a pool with both these guys in the summer, and what Brian doesn't understand is he doesn't have the plight of, of what Nick and I have of yes. just mad body hair there that is just completely in the pool. unrelenting. It wasn't just like us three. No, it was just us three. <laughs> I'm also going to tell Brian you. Brian was only wearing a Speedo, but other than that. <laughs> There's two things I researched last night. Okay. Prepping, and then I went down... The whole because of the ticket yesterday. Right. Yeah. Harper just posted a ventilator link. <laughs> <Amazon>. <laughs> I listened to the ticket where they talked about the Tyson Fury interview on like, sure. HBO Real Sports. Yeah, yeah. I also have now gotten into really watching Gypsy bare knuckle fighting. Good oh, gracious! I thought that's that what we watched on Saturday night. When Tyson Fury. I'm going to tell you basically what we did watch right on now. That shit is entertainment, and I think I may want to be a gypsy. <laughs> I used to, I'm gonna tell you right now, man. Yeah, I don't even know if I can go here. To go on a okay, <laughs> if that's the case, then you do it. Right <laughs> I, I just used to work at a restaurant, and I promise you, you don't want to be a gypsy. <laughs> like I just, it's as far as I can really? gonna reasonably go. I'm, with not, that. I'm gonna tell you right now. We live. We, you're watching this. We live in Dallas, Texas. There is, and I heard this on the ticket too, and I've, I've confirmed it with other sources. There is a literally an Irish traveler task force within the Dallas police it's department. Inform- oh, and, and then, oh. probably both. They do schemes. They like do bits. And like they rip off cell phone stores yes. and like all kinds of other stuff, but it's there's real traveling tribes. Tribes is might be the you right know, I don't word. Don't even give a shit, honestly. No, on the gypsies show. that do stuff. They, but gypsies crazy. will steal your shit, bro. They will come That's into restaurants and try and get free stuff. Constitutes being a gypsy. Otherwise, you're just an Irish person, right? I don't. I don't know the nationality. I think that's of sort said of the gypsies. Defini- well, there's 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 several, but I'm just saying. But either way, I, I will tell you right now, that was never the table you wanted to get because you were like. I'm getting stiffed on this shit so quick. I'm just going to tell you that those are the two things I'm researching right now. How do those do? Do you? Do you I think do believe any, Nick wants to be a gypsy. Though. What? What if? You, what if? What if everywhere in the world succumbed to the coronavirus pandemic except roving bands of traveling Irish gypsies? Would you join <laughs> just yes. to stay Hell safe? Yes. And look, I've been studying or would the you bare knuckle fighting game. It out? I don't know, man. Well, yeah, I mean, you'd probably you'd be a great bare knuckle. Brian's fighter. Brian's the worst person to ask about this because he he used to fight for his living or whatever. But like Nick, when was the last time you physically punched another human being in their flesh? It was in I was 18 years old. So yeah, it's been a while since I punched another years man. Ago. <laughs> I'll tell you this, man. And this is you can take this to the bank. This is actually more <laughs> solemn. It is probably one of the scariest feelings in the world to actually knock another human being out. I it have is, no doubt. There is a moment in time. Where you think you just killed somebody? Uh, yeah, you <laughs> literally are looking around like, oh shit, I'm in so much trouble. Poll of the it's week, so scary. Even though we've never done a poll, dunk a basketball, hit a home run, or score a touchdown on a professional level. Oh, score a touchdowns out right away. I agree, bro. If you just line it's up the out, third dude, least, dude, if you thing. line up out in the flat and the coverage is busted, you could fucking walk in yeah. on a lot of different schemes. That's coaching more than anything. I agree. Hit a home run, or what was the other one? Dunking, not just dunking, Ooh. dunking on somebody. Oh, dunking on somebody is way different. I still want to hit a home run. Watching a home run sail 400 feet yep. seems like it would just Are be Are you talking about sex, harder dude. or more satisfying? Just whatever. No, more, not, not harder, more satisfying. Oh, more satisfying. Hitting sat- a baseball oh. is the hardest thing to do in sports, period. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, more satisfying a home run for sure. Only because dunking happens in the blink of an eye. And then you got to go play defense immediately. Bro, you hit a home run, you know for five and a half seconds that shit is gone, and you get to big dick everybody around but the here's bases. The thing. And walk- then you get to go sit in the dugout and talk about it for like 15 more that minutes. That would be the best part, <laughs> yeah. is reliving the moment over yeah. and over again. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if every time you posterize somebody in NBA, you immediately went to the bench and some, some somebody else came on, and you just told everybody about <laughs> just it. Tell everybody you're like, y'all y'all that. see that dunk? And you, wa- you go over to the scorer's booth, and you watch the replay for a while, and you talk with them. 
this episode is Harvey's so off the rails. I'm going to tell you right now, though, this episode, vacation we've mode. Had, yeah. we're in vacation mode, but this has, has a lot of engagement that's not just real estate related. Right. So uh, we appreciate everyone listening and watching. And if you loved our off the rail stuff today, go leave us an iTunes review. Make sure it's five stars. Yeah. If you're going to leave us four stars, just stay off of that shit. Don't even go on there. Derek, you got anybody right behind us? Nope. Okay. Roll it. <laughs> he had that queued up so fast. And now, Brian Forces, billionaire uh, movie uh, something. I'm going to have all the means necessary. And you guys chime in with some ideas. Even you guys over here are, are awesome producers. And Derek, please get in on this. I'm going to have all the means to fly private. And I usually will. Fly private, probably, but... Usually will? You, yeah. you will eventually. <laughs> Not no, like no. you do now. Not like I do now. No, no, I I'm usually when, will. I'm you about, will find us at the Centurion Club at about 7 a.m. tomorrow. Yes. Though, I'm tell you that. That's real. We definitely drink private. <laughs> yeah. um, no, when I'm a billionaire, I'm going to fly private usually. But probably once a month, I'm going to fly commercial and sit in economy just so I can do viral bits. Of me acting like a total asshat on airplanes. <laughs> like, all the bits you see on the news, like this one where the dude, like, that's totally viral now. Where he's punching <laughs> the back of the seat and all that type that's of stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna purposely book my ticket late so I'm the first guy that gets bumped when they're oversold. And I'm going to Dr. Dang It or whatever his name was and make him fight me to get me off the plane. All kinds of stuff. And here's the thing. All this stuff goes viral now. And... Can you imagine what it would be like if, like, I think it was Dr. Dow. I don't know why that just popped in my head. Anyway, <laughs> can you imagine if it was the same dude every so often? Like every three months, not only was it the same dude who ended up in a viral video from being an asshat on a plane, <laughs> it was also well-known billionaire Brian Forrest. <laughs> like the dude who has all the means to travel privately and can... Just snap his fingers and get on a plane whenever he wants. He chooses to fly private every few months. Just to screw with 200 other Just humans. so he can rent out all the blankets ahead of time and build a fort. <laughs> and just do... <laughs> right? Like, I want to I want to test the boundaries. I want to see how much it will cost me to buy all the meals in first class. Well, you guys don't have to understand like, this. Brian's <laughs> dad's a former pilot, and I've heard some of these stories of what they used to get away with on the planes, just like oh, naked kids God. running around, building I'm forts. I'm going to tell you this right now. She's going to hate <laughs> Do me not for this. tell this I'm story. Gonna, no, She's going to kill you. My father is a, a, as a pilot for a well-known airline. I won't say it on the air because our podcast is, is pretty big now. I've been flying free my entire life. I've taken advantage of it my entire life. I've been everywhere. But... When I was a kid, we would fly all the time for hockey and stuff like that. My sister was very young. She was like maybe four. I was like seven. My brother was like 10. We're on a flight from Chicago to Dallas. This is back when blankets were free, which was eons ago. And so my brother and I, it's not a cold flight. We are just getting, we're going ham on these blankets, bro. We're collecting them out of the overheads. We're bribing other people to give them ours. And we build this fort. It's a lot of fun. I'm seven, he's ten. Forts are the shit. We're so excited. We're not doing anything in the fort because we don't have iPads or anything back then. We're like reading American Way, trying to figure out the Mensa questions, all that stuff. Um, anyway, my sister is in the row next to us or kind of across the aisle. She's like, what are you doing in your fort? And we are like, I can't remember how it happened, but, but we we're like, oh, it's super hot in here or some shit like that. And so we convinced her that we had taken off all our clothes inside our forts <laughs> as a bit, as a joke. She 100% did it. She was four. The flight attendant eventually came down the aisle to check to see who needed drinks, lifted up the flat on her, flap on her fort, found a naked child in there, lost her fucking mind. The whole plane erupted. Turbulence happened right at the same time, so everybody <laughs> flew up. No, that didn't happen. But everything else up into that, it was hilarious. And to this day, if she watches this, she, she, my lady just tagged her, and my dad yep. just tuned in. Uh, How did uh, all that happen at once? It just said Tom Four started watching. It was like his ears were burning. Anyway, uh, that's a legit story that happened, and I tell it all the time. She gets super mad. Too late, lady. Do you? <laughs> are you a recliner in your seat or yes. non recliner? The, 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 the seat reclines, and there's space for. I'll tell you what. I'm six three, and I don't care if the person in club reclines in front of me. So so if I recline in front of you, eat it. I, I don't, don't recline. Care. I'm I'm a non-recliner. Well, I'm six three. I just upgraded too. our seats today I, so we'd have more space. What I don't like is this. 
Give me time to adjust. Make up your mind one way or another. If you recline, do it early and let me settle into my new reality. If you recline mid-flight, I'm already twisted off. It takes up no space. No, but here's no, the deal. It does it's the air place. in no, front of your face. Because I sleep like this. I sleep instead. Most people sleep I, like you this. You sleep like a dummy. I sleep though. with my forehead against the thing. Why don't you? So bring, then, when you recline, my neck snaps like this. Why don't this. you bring that pillow that just sits in front of me and just lay on? I'll recline I'll, slowly. I'll <laughs> ease back into you, bro. But there's no. The seat reclines. We all got the same amount of space. I'm reclining. I don't care. If that dude was punching the back of your chair over and over, what would you have done? I would get up and choke that dude That's to the, sleep. Let me tell you something about this lady. Is that she has been she milking nice. her 15 yep. minutes. She's been milking her 15 minutes. She's doing interviews everywhere. But she was very nice about it. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you confront somebody on a plane, holy shit, just the tone changed real fast. Airplanes are this weird space in humanity where, like, we just think we won't do anything. I would tell you more than once, and Tom Forrest can chime in, that dude has stood up to some people on planes that were acting a fool, and things get real, real fast. There ain't right? nowhere to go, bro. No. Everybody <laughs> thinks you have to be polite on planes. I was on a flight, I think it was to L.A., and, and there's a lady in front of me. <laughs> Kelly just signed. Just signed. <laughs> She just Kelly, go up. back and watch the replay. There was, of this. There, I'm sorry. There's a there's a there's a lady uh, trying trying to put her bag up in front of me, and it wasn't fitting. And there's a dude sitting in front of me. He was like out of nowhere, one of these L.A. dudes, just like started giving her shit about the size of her bag. He's like, maybe if you had booked, or he's like, maybe if you had checked your bag, we'd all be sitting down right now. And like they'd never met before, and I'm already like. Ooh, is this guy, right? <laughs> and she's like the sweetest old lady. She's like, well, it, it fit in the thing before. And he was like, well, you know what plane you booked, so you should know better. <laughs> I stood up right away, and I was just like, brother. I was like, we're all trying to sit down right now. You're going to need to shut up. I helped her put her bag in. I turned around, and I was like, that's how you handle it, buddy. That motherfucker didn't say a word for the rest the of the flight. Rest like, of the it's, flight. Just, it's weird how we just we act like that in dentist's office, I swear. We act like jerks whenever anything goes wrong. <laughs> and we just act like nobody's going to step to us, like there's more consequences. There is not. Be kind on planes, people. You're all in, the, you're all in this together. Guys, touracademy.com, take 10. <laughs> You stuck with us for 10 extra minutes today. Nobody rejected. Vacation mode. It's amazing. We be skiing tomorrow, bitches. Derek, take us out. Banana. <laughs>